Hello everybody, this is Niklas Hoschmidt and welcome to the Premium Coaching Show here on Chess24 in which I analyze the games of... Oh, one second, I have to turn off the sound real quick. Be right back. All right, where was I? Where I analyze the games of premium members who have sent in their games through the database analysis and coaching tool here on Chess24. And today I'm hoping to get through all the games that still have been sent to me, but I have not looked at them yet, except for, well, games of people who have sent in already the second or third games, but uh, who I had already analyzed one of their games previously. So I'm going to speed up because it is, there are about five games, I believe. Uh, this is not one of them. Um, so we will be quick, but in the meantime, as always, yes, great. You, Grusher, can hear me and see me. And let's get started then, I would say. So five games to cover. I'll be quicker this time. Last time I took like one and a half hours for three games. So that wasn't quite exactly perfect. Um, and we'll start right away with K Storm. And he was playing with the black pieces. Let's see what he did, the French defense. And what do we have here? Oh, the McCutcheon variation, very interesting. Takes, takes, knight e4, queen g4, king f8. I really like the, this approach here. It's a very strategic approach. This whole variation, bishop d3, knight takes d2, this is all theory, as far as I know, h4, knight c6, rook h3, and yeah, I think this is all how this goes, and this is what I was talking about, it's kind of a strategic approach, black has a better pawn structure, but he has to make sure his king doesn't get into trouble, white is going to align his pieces and attack the black king, but in the long run, what I've often seen happening was that Black defense on the queen side and then crushes through on the defense on the king side, crushes through on the king on the queen side and uh, wins in a long game. There's this one player who won strong grandmaster. I uh, can't quite remember his name now, but he likes to play this variation. So let's see here. Bishop d7, rook g3, rook g8, knight h3, king e7, you're giving a an inaccuracy sign, you're saying knight e7 was better. Yeah, I know that the king has to get out of the way, but what might be the problem is that in the following variations it's not as easy, but king e7 doesn't look that bad. But knight e7 to bring the knight to f5, certainly also a good option. The idea knight f5. Yeah, that looks that looks good actually. So always check your options. But king e7, I wouldn't criticize that much. H5, queen f8, yeah, that's a standard maneuver. Bring the queen over, defend g7, and then move over with the king to c7. King e8, f4, and now a5. Yeah, maybe knight e7 now. What about knight e7 once again? Threat knight f5, which is already an unpleasant threat. White can't handle that easily. I mean, a move like bishop g4 looks suspicious, to say the very least. Um, but even if bishop g4 is working, you could at least now put the king to c7 already. And yeah, it f just feels like a king is much better placed on c7 than it is on e8. So that seems like a, an interesting choice here. Uh, what else can white do? Well, rook f3 maybe, but yeah, maybe rook f3 to prepare g4, f5. But once again, it feels like you can now move your king over and this is helpful to get the king out of the way. I mean, you're not really threatening to go b4 yet anyway, so it feels like a little bit... Not sure about this here. Okay, let's see how this continues. Rook f3, rook b8, g4, 
Okay, you're going for this. You're going for b4 here, but just feels not quite right with the king on e8, but maybe it works. f5. And f Schwarz is saying rook f3, knight f5, queen f2, followed by g4. Yeah, that's why I wouldn't recommend playing knight f5 after rook f3, because you're just running into being hit by the pawn. So f5 was played in this position, and now b3. All right, so this is getting pretty sharp. So you're going for this pass pawn, all right. Looks interesting. And yeah, you're threatening b2, and the queen is well placed, defending g7 pawn in very many variations, but it's also looking at the queen side and aiming at this pawn on a3. So takes d6, bishop takes, knight f4, and now b2 was possible, because, well, that's a threat, rook b1, and now just queen takes a3. Well, that worked out pretty well. Rook f f1, queen e7 back, yeah. I mean, now you're just threatened to go a4, a3, and so on. Queen h1. All right, white wants to take on d5. I mean, here already you can definitely think about a4 because knight takes d5, just queen g5 check. I guess you don't have to put up with this. You don't have to allow such counter play, but it is already an option to consider. So let's see. I mean, this can think about moves like knight takes d4 even, probably doesn't work. King d3, no follow up here. Um, but yeah, this pawn just needs to get to a2 and you're pretty much winning a rook, so that's huge. But yeah, why not defend the pawn on d5? So you played queen, queen d7, bishop f3 and now knight e7. Yeah, just defending the pawn. Okay, here rook b5, yeah, wouldn't be a good idea because of bishop takes c4. Okay, I just want to check that. Because I would have liked to keep my queen on e7 because looking at g5, it's looking in the direction of the queen side as well, so quite well placed there. But queen d7, bishop f3, now rook b5 would be possible, but then again, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with knight e7. Knight takes e6, f takes e6. All right, queen takes e6, you're saying, might be better objectively because he doesn't have play on the f file. f takes e6 also looks quite fine to me. Um, but we shall see. But, yeah, both moves, I mean, doesn't look like white can do anything against a4, a3, and you're just winning. Um, but I'm curious what white did after f takes e6. I don't think it matters much here. G5, okay, needs to go desperate pretty much. Now you want A4, Bishop G4, and now you are afraid of A3, Queen F3, but you're saying H takes G5, double question mark. <coughs> ah, tactics, tactics. Yeah, so you're pretty much winning, but you need to still concentrate, calculate, and make sure you don't miss something. So a3, queen f3, you're saying looks scary. Okay, the question is how scary is it really, right? That's the question. Um, so knight f5 would be a first move to check. Just block this. Okay, white has to take. He has to do something immediately. Otherwise, you just play a2 and you win. So takes, takes. Now queen takes a5. Can't be the way to go exchange a queen. So must be e6. Must be the move. So this requires calculation, no doubt. And uh, now, <clears throat> what can we look at now? Well, queen takes e6 runs into a rook f e1. And while we could check this, it seems, well, white has too much play here. That doesn't work. So we need to move to queen. Where can the queen go? Oh, I see a nice square, e7. The point is now white can take on f5 
because that would be the queen trade and queen trade just always wins for you on the spot because you just win here on the queen side. But white could play queen takes d5, so we need to check that. And now queen c6 is a threat. So all these lines need to be carefully calculated, obviously. So we could give a check here. Question is, is that doing much for us? Check, king goes, let's say here. And give another check here, trying to force queen exchange with queen e4. White can play king d2. Stop that. And now queen d7 is a threat. Okay. So maybe it doesn't, doesn't help much. So another thing to consider is queen takes h5. I mean all these checks they need to be they need to be checked to be honest um, and the situation has to be quite carefully evaluated because it seems like you're on the verge of winning with these pawns obviously you just need to kind of um, hold off the, the wide attack so let's let's go back a little bit a3 it just seems like the way to go I mean we can also check for other moves here I mean, you seem so close to winning here, so close. Rook f8 would be maybe another move. I mean, you just want to exchange material. You just want to take pieces off because then you're always going to win with those pawns. So what about rook f8? Let's say white plays like in the game, plays queen h3. Hey, chess castle, what's going on? Uh, rook takes f1. Now... Yeah, I don't think bishop takes e6 works here. Now just queen takes. Uh, yeah, no, this this can't work for white because the knight, this configuration here, black just blocks every check and that should be game over. Uh, rook d1 is the next threat. So white is to take back. Okay, now just a queen. No, that, that doesn't work. And queen takes f1. That feels too slow. Okay, that's winning for black. So what else can white do? Um, take. King takes. But it's all the same. Maybe queen h3 now. the idea rook f1 maybe next move the thing is even such lines you know where web plays like this and takes takes rook takes king g8 uh, white can, what can white do here? Rook f8, yeah, it wins the queen, but I'm getting a new one right away, so that doesn't help. And uh, what else can you do? G takes h6, and I'm just getting a queen. What are we talking about here? So, rook f8 looks good. Alright, chess call, so you played a 110 move game. I'm sorry to tell you that this is the last show, most likely, for I don't know how long, because the Olympia is starting tomorrow. And afterwards, I'm leaving Chess24 to move to Berlin to study. So maybe at some point, at some point, I'll continue the show from Berlin or something like that. But this is, uh, yeah, far cry from now. So this is also why I'm talking a little bit quicker because I want to get through the five games that I have left um, that uh, were sent to me, and then I'm pretty much done with all the games. Uh, I've covered everything uh, except for second and third games that people send in but at least i've had a chance to <clears throat> to cover games from people who have not been on the show yet all right so rook of this is a critical moment here you need to spend your time here you're on the verge of winning that must be pretty clear it doesn't feel like to me 
that white has enough that white has enough to to win to to have such a strong attack i mean even here i'm just curious to see this again now queen f7 is a threat followed by bishop takes e6 but i mean what's really what's going on you just go here okay white takes an e6 okay um And now you can take on b1 for starters, rook takes, and now just move to queen. And honestly, I don't think, I mean, what is white doing here? Yeah, I mean, this just seems easiest. So what I think here is that you said, oh, queen of three looks scary. I want to play safe. I want to play differently. Uh, and that you didn't spend the time to really calculate and then realize here, okay, white can just resign. He's down a rook and uh, no play really. I mean, maybe I still have to make some moves to untangle myself, but uh, where's the play? The knight is just keeping everything together and it's just game over. So this this seems to be the most straightforward here. Not knight f5, but just saying, what do you want from me? Just go a2 and allow the queen to f7. That's okay. Uh, we don't care that much. And then um yeah it's game over unless is there queen f7 and rook takes b2 any tricks here and now bishop takes e6 i mean even a move like queen a4 is possible look at this the knight is just keeping everything together and that's game over so yeah that was the critical moment here you went astray you took on g5 and now i'm not even sure how this helps you against queen f3. So I'm not sure what your idea was with this move because it's not really doing much for your position. And if queen f3 looks scared of the a3, where's the, where's the difference now? If white plays queen f3 now, I don't quite see it yet. Um, but your opponent had this idea now, unfortunately, uh, playing rook takes b2 now, and suddenly it's it's everybody's ball game again, like they say in the, in, uh, American sports commentary. Um, was there anything you could do here? Knight f5. Doesn't look particularly great now. Mm. Okay, let's see how this continues. Takes, takes, bishop takes e6, queen c6, takes, takes, queen f5, knight e7. Okay, you still have the knight, which is a great defender. White takes on g7. Now you played rook b8, double question mark, you're saying, along rook f6. But already here, this is not easy to play. Um, not sure what I would recommend here, because rook f6 is a strong threat. So what can you do? All right, let's see how this continues. Rook B, Rook B, <coughs> sorry. I think I need to drink something. Yeah, I don't see an obvious move for black. Rook B8 makes sense. Okay, let's see. Rook G8, all right. This gives white the option already to go into this rook end game, which is probably fine for black. Yeah, rook a8 or maybe g4 first looks actually quite quite decent for black. He plays queen f7, now queen c7, now h6. Quite complicated, obviously, but white is so active, so that's problem a3 h7 rook h8 queen g7 rook a8 rook d6 check <coughs> takes takes king takes okay this is just resignable okay so yeah i'm not sure where your last mistake was you didn't include many comments which makes it a little bit more difficult for me to to really pinpoint or uh yeah go to a critical moments but it seems like you're saying here rook b8 was a big mistake 
but this situation is already difficult. The biggest mistake you made was at this point where you played h takes g5 probably, where the, the win was within your grasp, right? Uh, but you, I don't know, either didn't spend enough time or didn't want to calculate that much, not sure, because h takes g5 was a strange, strange move to me, because it didn't really stop queen f3, which you were afraid of after a3. Uh, so let me see, is there anything, what can, what, what can black do here? Maybe go a3 immediately. But here rook f6. I don't know, queen c7 now? I mean, this all looks sketchy. Very sketchy. The problem is the white king is so safe in all these variations. So it's really difficult to, to create some counterplay. C Eagle saying 38 queen e6 with the idea perpetual threat. Um, no, queen e6 is not possible here. Maybe you meant somewhere else. No, I don't know. Anyways, we're not looking for white in either case. Um, we're looking for black here. We're trying to find a way to solve this for black, but probably you looked at it with the engine already and the engine can tell you. Um, and maybe queen e6, yeah? Queen e6 to get the queen active. No, it doesn't work either. There's always rook f6, rook d6 idea. Yeah, I don't know. But really, the the critical moment uh, was earlier, like I said. And then what I'm wondering is if you had any better chances here. If knight f5 maybe is, is possible. But this already is, is a completely different story. I don't need to tell you this. Uh, already it's, it's much more difficult to play. Um, Queen d6 now, maybe queen takes f5. I mean, we can look at all of this, uh, certainly, but yeah, suddenly it's it's very complex and you have the open king and not easy. And f short is the same. Uh, queen e6 and that position, rook f6 and then queen g8 and if rook d6, king e8, yeah, maybe something like this. Actually, it looks looks decent. Quite decent, yeah. Rook d6, king e8, queen f6. But now, white well, doesn't have any immediate threats at least. Well, rook e6, it's not too big of a problem. So I can push my pawn. Or maybe even play a move like queen h7 and suddenly I'm just winning. That's funny. Queen h7 just wins on the... On the Looks like wins on the spot because suddenly I'm attacking the white king. Yeah, so that was the, the other critical moment where you just had to find those defensive resources. And Duke Crusher is saying many people lose their nerves when they're winning. Yeah, that's why you gotta work even harder when you're winning so you don't let it slip away. But I'm sure you've taken this lesson from this game. All right, thanks for sending it in to K Storm. Let's go to the next game. It's by Kramnik Student. He was playing with the black pieces. So this was a 50 minute game I played on chess 24. It's a Mora Gambit. No, not a Mora Gambit. White actually takes back. Well, that's not really a recommendable line for white. And d6, bishop b5, bishop d7. Developing a knight before bishop doesn't look like a good idea, especially if you can achieve much with the pin. Yeah, I mean, in, in general, those rule of farms are not that important that you develop knights before bishops. But yeah, like you're saying, he doesn't achieve much. You just play bishop d7, you're completely fine. Knight e2, actually here you could just push this bishop away already. Just ask him, do you really want to take this, this knight off on c6 and uh, give me the bishop here? Um, or do you just want to move and then I can already think about moves like knight e5 still getting the bishop here. Right? And bishop c4 obviously would already want, run into b5. Um, so... I think a6 you can 
very well played already. But here still you can play a6. Even now it's stronger because white cannot even take because he loses the e4 pawn. So you would need to play bishop d3. And then, yeah, you can do whatever. I mean, now play g6, go b5, go knight d5, many options. Okay. On the other hand, it also doesn't run away. Hey, junior chess team, your game is also up for today. So I'm hoping to get there. And that's why I'm speaking quite fast. Bishop g7, bishop e3, a6. Okay, now you played a6, takes, takes. Now, capturing with the bishop is completely fine. You're winning a tempo, uh, hitting the queen, uh, attacking the pawn e4, so that's all great. Queen c4, rook c8 I like as well, queen d3. Here for that, gained an opening advantage because he moved his queen so many times. I'm almost developed. Yeah, you definitely have achieved an advantage. Uh, so, that's good. Here you could just cast, but not g4. No, that's also fine. Should have simply castled, but I thought I should try to get a stark straight bishop. Didn't realize that a d pawn could be weak, weak, but I decided to gamble. Um, not sure what you're talking about. The d pawn isn't weak, so uh, knight g4 looks fine. I mean, you could have castled as well. That would be a natural move, but I don't see anything wrong with this. Bishop d4, and now e5. Well, that move I would rather criticize. I would play knight e5 e5 here and, and attack the queen. I thought that was one of your ideas by playing knight g4 to bring the knight to e5. The engine suggests bishop a7, which I did not think of. Uh, e5 might be a bad move, but after knight g4 I couldn't see much of a way back. I've ended up reducing the scope of my own bishop along with gaining permanent weakness on d6. Yeah, knight e5 is my suggestion for a better plan. Uh, if white takes, well, you can take with the pawn, you can take with the bishop, you have the bishop pair, you're very comfortable. And if white moves, where, where is he moving? Bishop, queen to g3, maybe that's the problem, going f4 in the next move. Uh, but okay, castle, he goes f4, you play bishop, knight c4. All of this is still better than what, what happens in the game, because e5 is really not a move you want to play. Like you said, for reasons, d6 is weak and you, you're restricting your own bishop and you're giving white the square on d5. So three disadvantages, no advantages really. So uh, I would rather go for something like this. Knight e5 here seems much better to keep your nice healthy pawn structure. e5, you want to get the bishop, but even here if white just retreats, something like this, and then you get the bishop, but you have paid a high price. Like I said, this, the square is weak, on d5 and the pawn is weak. So now your bishop doesn't shine anymore. It's not this beautiful, great bishop on g7 in the Sicilian. And uh, it's very sad now with the pawn on e5 in front. Um, so that's actually what happened. Yeah, your pawn could play bishop a7 probably. It's a computer move in a way, but allows white to keep the bishop, I guess, even though then you could play rook a8, but then white retreats to e3 and he has worsened the position of your rook. So just a little subtle here. Bishop e3, you take, queen takes castle, rook a d1, queen e7. Uh, I would probably rather put my queen on c7, feels a little bit more natural, but maybe it doesn't make a big difference. Knight d5, I think this was a bad move as he gave me a c2 pawn. Yeah, probably not necessary to play so. Rook takes c2. But still, white has compensation because he has the better minor piece in theory. And I remember a game from the Olympia 2010, my colleague back then, Martin Kremer, strong player. He had really a similar situation with black where he also won a pawn. I'm not sure, maybe it was a c2 pawn as well. But his opponent then installed a knight on d5 and even went on to win the game, even though objectively speaking, black should be completely fine. But white has nice compensation in terms of weak pawn on d6 and possibly a, a beautiful knight on d5. So rook c6, I was afraid of knight c3 after which my rook can't return. The engine is suggesting bishop h6, I'm not sure how good it is. Yeah, if you can exchange the minor pieces, then that would be nice. So bishop h6 makes sense. And if white needs to move to queen, let's say to d3, you can probably go rook c8 when rook takes d6, but answered by rook d2 or rook takes e2, both winning. Um, on the spot probably. So then you have improved the bishop and um, it's more now doing much more on this diagonal than it used to be 
used to do on, on the H8A01 diagonal. So yeah, that's a nice little trick you have here to improve the bishop placement. Bishop uh, rook c6, yeah, it's a little bit passive, it feels like. Uh, you, you're right though, knight c3 might be annoying. So, okay, I understand where you're coming from there. Queen d3, f5. I felt that if I play passively, then white will build up something against my d6 pawn. Absolutely right. f3, I feel you should have taken a pawn f5. Now I agree with your pawn, he should keep it like that to not allow your bishop come back to life. f takes e4. Uh, now queen takes e4, okay. I now have a semi-open file for my rook, even though I did consider f4. No, now f4, that would be too slow. You close the position, but you're not going to get any attack going here anytime soon. And white will have enough play on the d-file, so it's good that you took on e4. Queen f6, okay. You might consider trading queens. Hmm... I'll probably instinctively put a rook on c8, but maybe that isn't doing much because of knight c3. So queen f6, b4, really? Uh, taking away the nice square on c3 for his knight. Okay, queen f5, knight g3, queen f4. If he doesn't exchange queens and plays queen e3, I want to exchange the rooks by playing rook c1. At this point I felt like I have, I'm having an advantage. Yeah, you're up a pawn and... Yeah, the question is how much he has for it. Yeah, but here rook takes f4 was a mistake, right? You want to get your bishop out again. You want to get the bishop, free the bishop, and put it on e5 here. For now, this is a perfect square, protects the pawn d6, protect himself. And then you can see what you can do here. Maybe you need to play, hmm, rook d8 doesn't work, of course, because the rook takes e5. So I'm wondering if you have something else here available. Well, rook c8 would be interesting, but it seems like this rook endgame is not giving you too much uh, because in the end, uh, white can do the same kind of trick that I just did and uh, win back the pawn on b7. That looks like a draw. So the question would be how to how to play here though. That's what you need to answer. Mm, because yeah, rook d8, rook d1, what is too active? Um, maybe maybe something like rook c4 here or rook c2, I could imagine. But you won't have much in this endgame after knight takes d6. Yeah, so I'm wondering if this whole queen stuff was really the best way to go. Um, maybe just rook c8 here, especially if the white played b4. Now we can try rook c4, can try rook c2. That looks better to my mind than what you did. Um, playing on a c file, keeping the queens on the board, because it also gives you more potential uh, to play possibly against the white king. And f Schwarz saying rook f5. Let's see what this is all about. The rook bd1, rook f Five? Probably not here, uh, so I'm not sure. All right, we gotta continue with the game. Time is ticking. Um, so in the game, after rook takes f4, white played b5. Now rook b6. I was afraid of opening the b5 for white as I would have two weaknesses on d6 and b7. Yeah, rook b6 looks fine. Promise only if white can play a4. That's what I'm concerned about. Uh, yeah, no, this is not good. You see how beautifully placed all the white pieces are. Knight on e4, rook on d5, pawn on b5, all in the light squares. And here after bishop f8. Here fell, I lost all my advantage and draw was what I was hoping for. Also my rook on f4 is badly placed. Well, I would be even more concerned about a4 because your rook is trapped, uh, will not get out anytime soon, honestly. I mean, you're not being threatened to to lose it because white can play a5, but you just don't get it out. Like, this is serious trouble, I think. Uh, you don't want to end up in a situation with a rook stuck. So what went wrong here in the last couple of moves? Maybe after b5, Maybe already you have to settle for something else. 
Um, but yeah, your bishop is just too bad. So what can you do? Mm. Yeah, I think you're fighting for a draw here already anyways. Let's be honest. But should be should be possible to obtain. Um, but takes probably probably why well, it doesn't even take back but plays knight e4 here to not allow your rook get into the game. And yeah, it's definitely not a pleasant position. So I think this queen trade that was what led to to the unpleasant position. Then also taking back with the rook definitely a mistake. Uh, because your bishop doesn't get back into the game and the rook is not well placed in f4 since just blocked by the knight now. So here rook b3 didn't play a4 surprisingly. Um, h6, you gave rook b3 a, a exclamation mark, I'm not sure why, I'm not sure what this move is about. Mm, but I feel like you need to take on b5 here to not have your rook stuck with a4, that's crucial. So take on b5 and also, yeah, takes, takes, takes. But here it feels like you're pretty close to draw. Or actually, maybe you can think about an adventure again because if you exchange one rook pair, that definitely helps you. So um, you can try to bring the king to e6, something like that. Maybe you can, you can press here unless white has some immediate way to, to draw this, but maybe not. Yeah, this must be a way to go. Rook takes or pawn takes b5. Maybe. Yeah, either one looks like, an, looks like a try. But rook takes b5, probably not a great try because of knight takes d6 here when it feels like this will feed out to draw pretty quickly. All right, let's keep going. h6 you played. a4 is, I guess, what both you, you and your opponent missed the whole time, just trapping the rook. Still, I would take on b5 here. Rook f7, b takes a6, okay. Ah, so that, that was what rook b3 was all about, protecting the rook, I see. Um, here you could also exchange rooks, but I'm guessing when knight takes d6 doesn't work because of rook d7, but rook a5, yeah, you're probably too passive here. But even this we can look at and king f7, king e6 next. Why not? Why not? All right, rook takes a6. In general, you want to take a pair of rooks off because with the double rooks on the board, white has much more uh, chance to create play, create counterplay. So that's the general rule of thumb here to follow. a3, rook c7, knight f6 check. White is helping my king to get to e6. That's nice. Um, Maybe he was hoping for king g7, that's ridiculous, yeah. If that's true, king e6. You're gonna f begin to feel like I could win this game provided I don't blunder. Well, that's always his case. d5 looks nice, finally got it and finally freeing the bishop. Hitting a3 and sets the center pawn rolling. Knight c3, rook takes a3. And knight takes d5, you missed that my rook can now move with check and you're just winning a piece and that's game over. Right, do I need to still look at this? Probably not. Okay, I think here we can stop. I'm sure you, you're confident to, to convert with an extra rook. Interesting game, a lot of positional insights there may with the bad bishop against the strong knight. And then in the end game, well, we do also have to remember it was a 15 minute game, so not that much time, but still some lessons to be learned and thanks for sending it in. Um, in the end game, yeah, you want to yeah, alleviate the pressure, I guess, earlier and uh, be, be also uh, conscious about uh, this decision to take off the queens and go into the end game um, when white really has this nice play on the light squares. All right, thanks to Kramnik student. Let's go to Eston. He was playing with the black pieces. So let's flip the board. And hello Nicholas, thanks for checking my game. It was the two hours, so a classical game. I was black and felt worse. The first 50 moves, in the end, I think I had a better position but no plans and was afraid of his knight coming to e4 in the backstanding position pawn if I play f5. The development of my white squared bishop was a struggle. I had the thoughts ahead, maybe you can add to them. Thank you. All right, let's see what happened here. 
knight f6, d3, d5 takes, knight takes d5. Uh, e takes d5 looks a little bit more natural. But yeah, you're saying bishop g5 is possible here. Okay, yeah. It's probably a different line. I mean, this also looks quite playable. I don't know, bishop e6. Um, but okay, knight takes d5. Yeah, but e takes d5 should be the, the right move, let's be honest. Un I was unsure of knight f6 the whole time because of bishop takes c6 and the resulting double pawn. Yeah, that could be unpleasant to play this position, so... Uh, yeah, you don't necessarily want to do that. So I think just developing is fine. Castle, castle. Bishop d2, knight f6. Knight f6. Now you allowed it, okay. Um, white could still do that, honestly. But yeah, you get you get the bishop here and maybe you can play e5. And here's the problem that this king is a little bit weakened, so it's kind of a trade-off. Also here, you don't need to move your knight from d5. It feels like it's, it's well placed. You can go b6, I would think, unless there's knight f4. But even here, you can probably just um, take on c3 and play bishop b7. And this looks pretty equal. You go bishop f6 next, and unless there's some direct trouble here, knight h5 maybe? Maybe knight h5 is some direct trouble, yeah. When e5 runs into a bishop takes e5 simply. Unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, so maybe this doesn't just doesn't work out for concrete reasons here to go b6 because of knight f4. And knight takes f4, this bishop takes c6, which is also annoying. And otherwise, I don't know how to defend this knight. Yeah, maybe it doesn't work out, b6, but that would be the move I would like to play. All right. That makes me wonder, of course, if you could have done it earlier, but no, knight f5, knight f4 is always an issue. All right, let's keep going. Knight f6, knight e4, queen c7, knight f4. And it suggests b6 here. Yeah, if you can, then play it. All right, b6, knight takes f6, bishop takes f6, bishop c3. Are you afraid of trading the bishops? Don't be afraid of that. Yeah, it gives him the b-file, but there's nothing there on the b-file. So that b-file doesn't matter. Uh, now you just play bishop b7. And having double pawns also a drawback. I mean, these pawns can be weak. It is a slight weakness, slight weakening of his pawn structure. So creating this double pawns, I would be not afraid about at all. Yeah, sure, they cover some squares in the center, but uh, the other side, this pawn on a2 is isolated, this pawn c3, they, those are weaknesses. So this is completely healthy for you, completely fine. You're just, um, yeah, it's, I would play black here anytime. So that just seems to be a positional uh, re-understanding, if that's the word, reconsideration you need to do here. Uh, open or half open b-file for the opponent is not such a big deal in this case because there are no targets really. This pawn structure b6, a7 and c5 is completely healthy and white can't do much with the b-file. Alright, so that was the way to go to develop your bishop playing b6. So you took on e4, bishop takes and yeah, now the bishop is a little bit more active. Bishop f6 a terrible blunder. Uh, yeah, once again, if b6 is possible, I would go for it. But now already you have to check for moves like queen h5 and what's going on there. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem too troublesome. I mean, question is if stuff like this works and it might or might not actually, you can just play bishop f6, defend h7 and you're up a piece. But those things obviously need to be checked. 
um, because when it comes to your king, you always want to make sure everything is fine. All right, so b6, I would probably propose here once again, unless there's something wrong with it, but can't see it right now. Um, bishop f6, so now running into queen h5, queen takes c5, yeah, gotta watch out for those things and gotta finish your development. I mean, even if you play a move like bishop d7, at least you're finishing your development here, and I think that's important. So bishop f6, rook b1. g6, okay, well, that looks nice, put the bishop away. And a3, rook d8, he was a bit helpless, my white bishop is bad, how to bring it into the game, thought the rook on the f file, on the file is something at least. Well, once again, play b6 or play bishop d7. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware the bishop is not that great on d7 right now, but you can still later play rook d8, play the bishop back on c8, at least you're getting your pieces out, that's the important part. Get the rook on a8 out, it wants to come into the game, right? So that's what matters. Or play b6, I mean, he can go b4. Sure, he can do that and you just take, go bishop b7 and it's also completely fine. I mean, not much happening here. You're very solid. Yeah, if he goes b5, you go knight d4. It all looks fine to my mind. So rook d8, yeah, not... Now you want to finish your development first and even if that means you're putting a bishop on d7, doesn't matter. Uh, play bishop d7, play rook d8. Let's say bishop d7, he plays b4, okay. Uh, we take, now you can, I don't know, go knight d4 maybe, that looks nice, if c3, maybe hit this pawn again, knight b5. I mean, your pieces are well placed, and now with the bishop out, you can immediately bring the rook to c8 or to d8, and it's just much more uh, coordinated everything. So rook d8, Queen e1, rook b8 to be able to play knight d4 without a bishop a5 threat. Okay, that's the point. Once again, I would recommend b6, obviously, or bishop d7. Um, yeah, just makes sense to me. Especially, you want to exchange this bishop at some point, maybe. So you have some targets, you have some light square weaknesses you can target around the white king, right? All these squares, then, if the bishop come off, f3, g2, h3, they're all weak. So you played rook b8, bishop c3, knight d4, okay, bishop takes, bishop takes, now I thought I should have a better position, but I lacked plans. h4, h4, okay, <clears throat> b6, now you're playing b6, there we go. Knight e2, bishop drops back, b3, bishop b7, Here you can also think about e5, I think. Just grab some more space in the center. If not c3, you just play bishop e6. And then you, you go on, you play rook e8, you play rook d8, improve your position slowly, you have the bishop pair. Very nice. You can play f5. Um, you have a space advantage. That looks also very pleasant. Okay, bishop b7. Bishop takes, queen takes, knight c3, queen f3. Yeah, queen f3 is like a pseudo active move. Uh, I would not necessarily play because it allows white to just go queen e4 and trade queens. Um, or you have to play queen f6. But it allows white to play this active move. And uh, I feel like trading queens would help uh, white a little bit, even though this position would still rather be black. Um, so you can just keep the queen on b7 and do something else here. So what could be a plan? Typical plan is here to, to do something like b5 and c4 at some point. Of course, you wanna make sure you don't run into uh, this rook, but um, yeah, that would be a typical plan to, to open up the queen side and then put on pressure there. So that would be a way to go b5 and prepare c4 at some point. What is white going to do? I don't know. I mean, he can move to queen right now. Uh, 
knight e4 looks like a normal move, but then yeah, you play queen c6 and you go c4 next move. And you can target these pawns, whereas white really doesn't have a plan and is lacking counterplay and beautiful position for you. So after queen f3, a4, I agreed to a draw because of the reasons I stated in the beginning. Now we go back to the beginning. Let's just go, let's just see what you said here again. Uh, I had no plans and I was afraid of the knight coming to e4 in the backstanding pawn if I play f5. Okay, so the plans we already covered a little bit. Now it has become more difficult to play c4, unfortunately, because your opponent has gotten a4 in. That means you need to prepare with a6 first. But you can still do the same thing and play a6, then prepare b5, go c4. I mean, that's what you're going for, really. Um, yeah, and the knight on e4, well, it's not doing much. I mean, maybe it looks pretty. And yeah, you want to be careful with playing move like f5. Sometimes that's possible, but um, you don't need to. The, the knight is not that scary on e4. So you can just continue with your plan, prepare c4, and open up the queen side. All right, so um, yeah, don't don't be, I don't know, too concerned if you don't have a plan. Just see where you can play. I mean, position is it's not close, but it's, yeah, it's not clear where you're going to play, uh, certainly. Uh, but now you're aware of this plan, a6, b5, and so on. Yeah. I wouldn't go e5 here necessarily because you want to keep your bishop open. Also, move you can play here is bishop d4, by the way. Just introducing this little idea, queen takes g3. Just see how your opponent reacts to that. If he needs to play king h2, well, yeah, probably king h2 he needs to play already. Or knight e2, which looks strange, but it's probably also possible. Um, but in general, yeah, this plan with a6. And B5 is the way to go. All right, thanks to Eston for sending it in, and we'll go to the next game by Duke Crusher. And Duke Crusher was playing with the black pieces. And I think we're doing well for the time, right? 37 minutes left for two games. I think I have some chance to get through all the games. All right, Duke Crusher, let's see. Knight c3, d6. I read Cast Power's book on the e6, d6 Sicilian, and this was one of the positions from the book. Gary advocates d4 and gives the position as roughly equal, but my opponent played bishop e2. Was, bishop e2. was this an inaccuracy after d6? Hmm. Hmm. Something strikes me as already not right here. Because d6, I mean, I'm not sure what what exactly Gary Kasparov's book is, but this, I mean, this is a Marachi structure. This is more pleasant for white already. I wouldn't say it is equal. Uh, I would not like to necessarily play this with, with black. Uh, maybe it is equal theoretically, but practically better for white. Um, so let's see, knight c3, c4 here. I think you can go d5. I think you can go d5, or what Albert is saying, d5 looks interesting, or you can go here, e5 is actually interesting. The point is that the knight on f3 is a little bit misplaced. Usually in these structures, the knight wants to be on e2, so white can play f4 in the future. So let's say white plays the normal moves, you just both develop, um, and then you put your knight on e7 and keep f5 as an option, and white needs to move the knight somewhere to have this typical plan f4 available. So that's that's a good contribution here by Albert, and um, also a way to play because yeah, here I would I would personally not like to play this position after d4 with black. Okay, bishop e2 is not an inaccuracy. White can still play d4 later. Well, you could say it's an inaccuracy if you now go e5, but since you don't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, here, white could still play d4. But he chose a different setup, d3, g6. When I played g6, I was aware that theoretically it was not the most accurate move. But I deliberately tried with two ideas in mind. If e takes f5, like in the game, 
I would castle queen side and tag down a g file. If he didn't take, I would aim for a center of e5 and f5. Rerouting my bishop to g7 via the f8 square. Oh, so you want to get f5 so early. Yeah, I didn't even realize what, what you're talking about with e takes f5. Okay. Well, that's a non-standard plan here, honestly. Um, the, the typical development moves would be knight f6 and castle. And maybe you can even play d5 fairly early. You just have to double check that works. And other plans would be a6, rook b8, b5. And this g6 plan, honestly, doesn't feel sound to me. Castle f5. Uh, yeah. Your opponent shouldn't take on f5 necessarily, but the problem with this is you're playing a lot of pawn moves and you're lacking behind in development. So let's say White now plays d4 and, and opens up the center, which makes a lot of sense if, well, you in this case are behind development. Your king is still in the center, you still need some time to finish your development. And he would be already quite afraid for you, to be honest, uh, because the position is going to open up, files are going to open, your king is still in the center. If you castle, King side, you also have weakened yourself with g6. Uh, I don't even know what you play here. I mean, knight f6, uh, white can choose between d5, can go e5, can take on f5, and then play d5. I mean, a lot of good options here. This is not looking great. Um, yeah, really, this is this is looking difficult already. So that's. That's the general uh, problem with this plan. I mean, interesting plan to go g6 and f5, but you want to make sure you have your development straight first and your king safe first. Okay, e takes f5, g takes f5, bishop f4, e5, bishop d2. Yeah, now of course this all worked out beautifully because you have nice control over the center, so you won't open it up and you can just castle queenside and it's great, it's great. But um, if your opponent had played a little bit more energetically and not play a move like bishop f4 here, but play a move like d4 here, then, uh, you know, I feel like I, w I would be concerned for you. Um, I would be a little bit concerned for you, definitely. I mean, maybe it's not that bad here, uh, but still, it feels very, very risky because you have all these weaknesses. These pawns are all a little bit loose. So white is completely developed. And yeah, actually I'm noticing that I'm missing bishop h5 still possible, forcing a king to stay in the center. So yeah, all right. Let's see what happened here. Bishop g5, rook g8. I'll probably just play bishop e6 to cover d5. Because now white can bring the knight to d5. Doesn't matter that much, but it wasn't maybe necessary if you play uh, bishop e6 here, if then white does something like that, you just chop it off and play knight e7 and win this pawn sooner or later. Okay, so rook g8, takes takes, knight d5. Now you go f4, still I would, uh, okay, I think I like f4. Yeah, I do like f4. Uh, having the threat of bishop h3 and developing a bishop that way. And now, yeah, that looks pretty nice. Rook e1. Oh, the time control, by the way, I think it was like a, what was it, like five minute game here? Oh no, 45 minutes, never mind. 45 minutes? But you guys are playing very fast. Hold on. What is this time control? 45 seconds? And 10 seconds increment? <laughs> okay. I really don't know, but this game is pretty fast, that's for sure. Uh, rook e1, bishop e6. Yeah, you could also go bishop h3. Um, but maybe g3. Yeah, but still bishop h3 looks a little bit better. g3 and then just castle and then maybe go h5, h4. Something like this. I and mean, bishop is very well placed already on h3. So bishop e6, bishop f1, castle, a3. And now you're amping up the pressure also an interesting move here is to go bishop g4 and, and threatening knight d4 maybe, um, which would be a little bit unpleasant to meet. I guess your opponent has to go bishop e2 now and then you could you know, play this again, 
something like this. But this is also just an idea to keep in mind. But doubling on a G file can't be wrong. Rook D G eight, B takes C five, and now Rook takes G two. Very nice. I like this. And Bishop H three, King F one. Yeah, but this looks like a massacre now. Uh, King F one takes King E two takes takes knight e4 uh oh uh oh this is not looking good for white yeah d5 yeah ah uh, d5 no it doesn't well d i mean i'm sure there are a lot of ways to checkmate here um or it takes queen f5 so what did you do play queen f5 king d5 king d7 this position i missed the mate in two but went for a more authentic i guess you missed you missed this checkmate Authentic uh, finish using the king as an attacking unit. I'm not sure if my opponent could have improved on this play after my sacrifice of allowing rook takes g2. Was it just a blunder? I can tell you. Allowing rook takes g2 was a blunder because he already could have checkmated. And there was no way out after that anymore. I'm pretty sure. So here king d7 takes, queen e6, king e4, king takes d6, bring the king in yourself. What the heck? Was that really necessary? I mean, I would have preferred a more calm a way to checkmate, not bring your king yourself to c5. <laughs> but I guess if it works, it works. Um, okay, that's funny though. All right, there was the checkmate. But yeah, after rook takes g2, bishop takes g2, bishop h3, no. I mean, this must be game over. Absolutely, king of one. Otherwise, you just check on g2. Now that's game over. His mistake was to allow rook takes g2, so you would need to play a move like king h1 here. Uh, but even this position looks very sketchy to me. Um, bishop g4 maybe now. Threatening knight d4, he has to go bishop e2. I can't really put my finger on it, but... Uh, Looks super sketchy. Bishop h5, rook g1. Not sure where the exact win is, but yeah, it looks really good. Infusius 14 is asking all these simple plan. What about any concrete plan? Um, not sure what you're talking about, but this was pretty straightforward here for black to attack on the on the king side and double there and increase the pressure. So it was a position which uh, required concrete play and we're getting to the last game. It's a game by junior chess team and he was playing with the black pieces. We have approximately 27 minutes and I should not increase the board size but rather flip the board. Uh, let me drink something and then we'll get to the final accord. I hope it's called like that. I've played with I'm Ionescu Mihal and I read Open 2016, time control was 90 minutes and 30 seconds. Per move, I picked King's Indian because I want to win. I had some good chance but I didn't convert to win. So let's see. The King's Indian. My old opening. Well, very old. Yeah, I've played this, this line before. <laughs> Alright, this is all theory. Up to a certain point, I don't know when it ends. You didn't include too many comments during the chess team, but okay, we'll see what I can do. You're welcome, Duke Crusher. I hope that was insightful for you. Um, knight f4, rook bishop f1, knight f5. I mean, this already looks like a dream position for, for black. Maybe I'm mistaken, but the knight is coming to d4, white is to go g3, which is weakening his position. You know, I'm always tempted to sacrifice stuff, but here I guess it doesn't work. Knight d4, just g takes f4, and yeah. Unfortunately, no follow-ups. Okay, so you have to retreat as sad as that is. Bishop g2, knight d4, bishop e3. h6, okay, castle. c5, knight b5. Threatening to take on d6, so you're forced to take there. Okay. Hmm. 
Knight e7, okay, getting a next knight to d4, that makes sense. I'm thinking about to move a6 to open up the a file potentially. If white plays a4, well, then this pawn could be a target for, yeah, for you. Let's say something like this and play queen b6 followed by bishop d7. That looks like this pawn is going to be very weak. So white probably has to play differently, maybe queen d3 here. But um, now, yeah, you could just take and play rook a5 followed by b5. And this looks great, followed by c4, controlling more on the queen side. Uh, of course, well, you have to make sure you're not blundering knight takes c5, which I did here. So maybe after this, maybe first play knight e7. But a6 certainly kind of a move that stands out to me because you want to open it up here. Uh, to, to get some play on the queen side. So maybe here first move like knight e7 or bishop f5. And, but a move to keep in mind. So knight e7, queen d, uh, a4, yeah, now your opponent supports this already, which makes sense. Um, so it's really the question if you could have done this right here, but queen d3, which is idea of knight takes g5 or knight takes c5, might be a good, good counter But definitely to consider, definitely to consider. A takes b5. If knight takes g5, you can go bishop f5, knight e4, and c4. This looks healthy. But maybe more so knight takes c5 might be a problem. But actually, no, this also looks very nice. Bishop f5 and taking on d5. Um, so, yeah, maybe a6. Maybe a6 at this point. Interesting, interesting. 97, how long is this game? 58 moves. I'm just checking how much time I can spend on each moment. All right, bring the knight to f5, all right. I'm bringing it to d4 again, very strong square, obviously, rook a3. Uh, still, I would consider this move a6. a6, and just see what happens. I mean, if white takes, you can even take with the pawn and try to do something on the b file. Or you can take with the rook, rook b6 in the air, you target a4. a6 looks like a healthy choice. You play bishop f5, also makes sense, develop the last piece. Now he goes f4. Okay, wow. g takes, g takes. Uh, what about... Okay, you had some concrete ideas, but I thought taking, taking, and going g4 is also looking quite healthy. Um, to keep it kind of closed like that a little bit, not open up this bishop. And um, yeah, if you can go h5 now, that would be very nice. Or queen h4 next, so he needs to take, I'm assuming, takes, takes. And yeah, I mean, this looks good for you. Uh, what is white doing here? You can play knight f5 again next move. This looks pretty good. Bishop f2, just knight f5. Um, what other moves does white have? I don't know. I mean, this position in general looks very nice. Because white is not having much much play here, it seems. Um, I'm not sure what you didn't like about g4, because it's a standard way to react to this, to this advance, I would say. Take first and play g4 and keep this bishop locked. So the bishop isn't coming out here on this diagonal. And you're keeping a nice square on f5. Um, knight g3, no, no, this can't work. Um, yeah, h, no, h4, I'm blundering, sorry. Queen takes h4 simply. So g4 looks really nice, but maybe what you did is even better. We shall see, takes, takes, takes here, queen h4. Okay. Okay, okay. Threatening queen takes h3. I mean, I'm just saying you need to be very careful before you do this, because before you just give up your beautiful knight square bishop. Um, I'm guessing your argument is that white can't really defend his pawn nicely on h3. And he played bishop takes d4 now.
but yeah, I, I, I personally like my move better. I, I'm going to put it like this, uh, going e takes f4 and then going g4. I would like to keep the bishop on the board. And I'm thinking here, what can white do? I mean, what if white just plays bishop g2 back? Oh, I'm guessing there are some tactics here, yeah? So you were hoping for tricks. Well, maybe not only hoping. Some tricks here. And what if white plays... Yeah, I'm guessing here there are also tricks. Rook takes f4, yeah. So maybe this just concretely... I mean, if it forces white to take on d4, you're probably in a comfortable spot. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and king g2? Probably also just takes and rook a8. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right that you're having good play here. And it makes sense. So, okay, forcing bishop takes d4, bishop f2, you can just take an f4. Always go for tricks. Yeah, it's a good strategy because more often than not, it works. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I mean, I, I feel it feels like it's a matter of taste, but this looks pretty pleasant if white has to take on d4. And now you took with the c pawn, you're saying e takes d4 was the way to go. Yeah. You have the chance to go c4 next move, that looks great indeed. Um, and those pawns are strong. I mean, if white, I'm not sure if white can go b3, but it's ugly with the rook on a3, no doubt. Uh, and yeah, rook a8 and target the f4 pawn and hold on, h3 is also hanging out, that's just no good. So yeah, this is looking pretty decent going c4, going c3, uh, very interesting. And Albert is saying going, uh, well, hold on, bishop b1 with the idea queen d3. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Of course, we need to be aware of that. Um, the question is though, how much of a problem is it? Let's, let's just say a play like that. And if queen d3, I just take, I'm just, you know, ice cold, just go to f8. And um, of course, I got to make sure that I don't blunder here, uh, which can easily happen. Let's say move like rook f3 now could already be uh, the case that I blundered. But this has to be very concretely checked. I mean, in the worst case, I could go rook e1 here, <laughs> which still allows me to give a perpetual. Um, but yeah, this needs to be checked. And that's a good good idea, good uh, point it out. Um, this plan of bishop b1, queen d3. But it feels like white, black should be able to, to cope with this in some way, in some way, yeah. And Dago Arsenievich says queen g2, but I'm not sure where. And maybe in this position, queen g2, but here also e takes f4, I'm pretty sure it's just possible. All right, let's get to the game. Takes, c takes, d4. Uh, yeah, e takes d4, we said it was better, because it gives black this Nice uh, combination of pawns. Rook a3. Rook takes f4. Yeah. I guess e takes f4, just rook takes f4. But this looks interesting too, yeah? Queen g3 check. If queen g2, this looks very sketchy. I mean, probably even this is, is good for, for black. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's good for black. Uh, so white has to do what? Bishop g2. And 
I mean, you could do this and take with the bishop and white can pick up the pawn because of bishop d4. That would be probably a nice, nice end game to play, no, no risk uh, and just good winning chances too. Um, so that would be possible. Um, is there anything else possible? Yeah, queen e3. Yeah, it looks nice. Looks like looks like a very nice endgame. Maybe queen e3 is the best chance. Or I mean, even also those positions, just all are a little bit better because yeah, you're just just pretty much up a pawn because white has those double pawns. You can try to invade here on the c file, and you have some chances absolutely. So this looks like also interesting, but let's see what happened in the game. Queen g3 takes, oh, so that actually, did that exact same end game happens. Then the question is, yeah, maybe the one with the pawn e3 could be even better than what we're seeing here. Albert is saying rook takes f3, rook a f3. Yeah, I think we covered this line already. Uh, Albert, um, d3, okay, d3 looks like a mistake, yeah? If you have to give up your pawn or your rook, then something went wrong. Uh, and, uh, I don't think you can convert this here anymore. Let's just see if you could do anything. No. I mean, what can you do here? White just keeps the bishop uh, king on d1 and doesn't matter how many pawns you have on the d file, just doesn't matter. The king just stays on d1 um, the whole time, yeah? And it's a draw. So what, you, what the last thing is you want in this end game is exchange rooks. So d3 was a mistake, yeah, rook c8, absolutely. With d3, you're just giving away all your winning chance immediately. You gotta be careful with those pawn advances. Uh, rook c8, threatening rook c2. So what does white do? I don't know, but rook e4 doesn't even do much. Yeah, but should be four simply blocking this. Um, now rook f2. But even rook c1 now, king h2, bishop e5. Um, probably bishop f1. Because rook f1, it would be rook d3. And here, I think white can resign because of bishop d4. And um, so bishop f1. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm wondering what, how much you can try here. Because your king can't really join the action that easily. I mean, if you have something, you need to get it quickly. Let's put it like that. Um, yeah, d3 here looks strong. Yeah, d3. And you have something. Yeah. Unless it's king g2. But then bishop d4. Yeah. Yeah, and you're winning rook d2, rook c2, and resign. And if the rook goes somewhere else, obviously just d2. So this winning. So there's some traps to avoid for white. If you can't go rook c2, what can you do? You can go maybe rook f3 and put the pawn on b3. That's probably much smarter. 
But again, rook c1, rook c1, forcing uh, bishop f1, king h2, bishop e5, rook f1, rook c2. And um, But yeah, now maybe there's no great follow-up, yeah? Well, it just puts the pawn on b3 and not sure if you can try much here, yeah? Probably you can't try too much. This seems pretty really difficult to, to overcome this kind of position. All right, so really if we're going back where the mistakes were, well, for one, we could say c takes d4, instead play e takes d4, and the pawn on f4 won't be exchanged, and you can just target it, attack it, and also you have those pawns in the center. Um, and then I feel like you could have gone for more. Uh, you could have gone for more here in this critical position. Yeah. Maybe take with the pawn and then you have some more options. Queen g3, bishop g2 and queen e3 and with the pawn e3 having more advanced. Yeah, I can't really believe rook f2, that looks weird. But having the pawn on e3 in those lines gives you, I think, some more value. Might be still a draw, but you have better chances, all right? So thanks to Junior Chess Team for sending that in. Um, and we've done it. We, I've covered all the games, uh, except for, hold on. There was a game by Chess Chipmunk. Ah, I forgot about that one. How long is it? Hmm. This game was played in an over the board tournament between me and a strong CM. All right, chess chipmunk. I only have seven minutes, but I'm gonna try to say some words because uh, I feel bad if I leave you out. I kind of forgot about you, but um, let's see. Yeah, this is a fury line, so you're tricked into this here, it looks like. Uh, yeah, you're tricked tricked into it. Yeah, this, this has happened to me often. This is a completely new position, but I believe I had good compensation for a pawn due to my lead in development. Yeah, I guess you have some some compensation, but the question is if it's enough. Queen b6, I was playing for an attack. Yeah, you pawn down, so you don't want to trade queens. Uh, knight e4, queen b4, knight takes c5, queen takes c5. b4, yeah, that looks nice to get those pawns rolling. Queen e5. All right, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now you're, you're much better, obviously you have won the pawn back and you're, you're having an attack against the, uh, the the king, so that's great. Just repeat once to gain time on the clock, and he didn't repeat, that's funny. That's funny, he didn't repeat. Uh, okay, well, I'm sure you weren't too unhappy with that. b5 looks very sensible, rook d3, rook fb1. Um, okay, 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 okay. Wait, what about b takes c6 here? I mean, knight takes c6, bishop takes c6. I guess, no, but queen a8, your opponent just loses. I mean, lose the pawn and lose the game. Uh, so knight takes c6 doesn't even work. Because of bishop takes c6, so I'm missing something. Queen takes, queen a8, just winning the rook on h8. And um, so pawn takes c6 is what your pawn want to play, I suppose. But uh, now queen h8 also wins at least a pawn if you want to. I mean, you don't have to do this, but this is just an extra pawn. Um, with good winning chance in the end game, no doubt. I mean, you have the bishop and also you have the a pawn, which is a strong force in combination with this bishop controlling the a file. This looks, looks splendid. Did you think about b takes c6? Is maybe b6 a move? No, I mean, certainly not. Queen a6 check, rook b1. This is bad. What about b takes c6? Sometimes the simple uh, continuation is the best. 
All right, rook f3 one rook d8. Yeah, now it looks like you have passed up this opportunity. Okay, now b takes c6. Knight takes, queen a8, king d7. During the game, I was also considering a plan of a4, a5, a6. Yeah, maybe a little bit slow. Yeah, you're right. Queen takes b7. Yeah, you have one upon. So that's good. But I felt like before, it might have been even better. Anyways, pawn is pawn. Uh, queen e4. What? I would not like to give my opponent this, this opportunity to take on f3. Unless it really you're really absolutely sure you're winning here on the spot. But are you winning on the spot? I mean, king e8. Um, rook b7. I mean, it looks good, but you're not winning on the spot, so I would not do this. I would not not go for this. Just play bishop e4 here. Nothing wrong with that, as far as I can tell. Or, yeah, bishop e4 looks, looks good. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. King e8, bishop rook b7, queen d6. I was in time pressure and position looked double edged, so I was pretty nervous at this point. Yeah, this bishop, I don't don't allow your your opponent to to um, take an f3. I don't know if you can go bishop e2 here, but probably it's rook d1, uh, which is slightly annoying already. Okay. Anyway, h3, g6, queen h4. I completely missed this move in time pressure. Oh no, tactics, train tactics. Uh, but the good thing is was my opponent was also in, in the position still unclear and complicated. Queen takes h7. Yeah, but you lost a piece. Uh, rook f5, rook e1, rook h5, queen g7. Hold on, win back the piece if you can. Win back the piece. Oh no, e5 is protected, never mind. Okay. Queen g7. Rook g5. This was a blunder by my opponents. I mentioned we both were in severe time trouble. Rook takes e5. Beautiful. Uh, actually, what's going on? Oh, no, I see it. Nice, nice, nice. That's a nice counter. Uh, the opponents, rook takes e5, queen h8, and queen takes e5 wins back. The material, and queen takes e5, of course, is checkmate. Or oh, actually, there's always checkmate f7, which I didn't notice. Okay. All right, so uh, rook takes g2. You know what would have been nice? Just to show this, queen c6 and rook d5. That would have been nice <laughs> if it works. But yeah, it works. That, that would have been nice, I think. Would have been a nice finish. And, and this. Anyways, king h1, I assume, is good enough. And nice finish. A neat finish during a very exciting game. I'm very proud of this game and how it beat a stronger play in a nail biting finish. Yeah, next time just make sure you don't blunder pieces and you have enough time for those complications. Right? So uh yeah, next time make sure you are on top there. But overall, yeah, pretty decent game. I mean you wanna recheck that opening, make sure you don't run into something like that again because next time your opponent might be a little bit more careful and then keep an extra pawn. And I'm not sure if you have enough compensation for the pawn. And then, yeah, in this critical phase, I felt like you should not have allowed this knight takes f3 or any, any sacrifice there, maybe just move the bishop away. All right, I'm glad I at least could look at this briefly, even though I would have liked to look at it longer, obviously, but I think I covered the main uh, main points. And um, so I hope that was helpful for you. For all of those that watched and uh, over the last few months I had this show, thanks to you all. I had a lot of fun going over those games and I hope I could provide some insights here and help you guys out to improve your play, to know what you're looking for in your own games. And I really encourage all of you to analyze your game. It's such a 
underestimated, I think, tool to have to, to see what mistakes am I making and how can I get rid of these mistakes in the future? What can I improve? And then work on these areas specifically. If you make tactical mistakes over and over again in your games, you know I have to train tactics every day to get this out of me. So, and when you struggle in the opening and you end up worse uh, after the opening every time, then you also know where you have to work on. So analyze your games, by yourself with your opponent right after your game. Just after a game, ask your opponent, hey, do you want to analyze? And most of the time they will and it's just, it's fun. You maybe make a new friend and you learn something in the process. Then analyze with the computer and analyze with stronger players in your club maybe or wherever you can meet them or maybe you have a coach. All right, thanks to your goal. Thanks to you all for watching and see you tomorrow maybe, well, if you're German, in the German broadcast of the Olympiad. Bye-bye.